everyone, can you hear me? All right, so welcome to my presentation. Uh, let's make it a threesome, including designers and open source hardware projects. Um, my name is Maria. I'm a user experience and uh, digital product designer. I have uh, over 20 years experience, um, mostly working on commercial projects. Uh, over the last five or six years, been in the IoT space. However, in 2003, I wanted to contribute to something that was a little bit more meaningful to me. Um, so I developed an interest in open source technologies, uh, particularly in peer-to-peer -peer environments. And I'm um, presently um, a core member of Breathing Games. Uh, I'm going to talk about that project a little bit later. And I'm also a recent member of the Gathering of Open Science Hardware. So why am I here today? Um, through my involvement in a number of uh, open source projects and a couple of communities, I've noticed that there are very few designers particip participating in open source projects, particularly in open source hardware. And after speaking to other designers um, that I've met in, um, in these open source contexts and doing a little bit of research online, I found that this was my experience where I was not alone. Uh, despite designers' lack of involvement in open source projects, I feel that we can make meaningful contributions. Um, and I also want to promote collaboration between engineers, developers, and designers. So the question has been asked, why aren't there more designers in OSH projects? Well, after doing some research, um, designers don't know how to join open source projects. Um, there's sort of a barrier uh, to entry in terms of information and some issues with platform. Um, also, OSH projects tend to follow engineering processes, which are a little bit at odds with how designers work. And finally, there seems to be a lack of understanding of how designers design. So in support of um, OSHWA's goal to create an inclusive, welcoming environment to empower people in all stages of discovering open source technology, I'm going to attempt to dismissify how designers work and the ways we can contribute to OSH projects. So there are many different interpretations of what design is and what a designer's role should be. Um, Oxford Dictionary uses a very narrow definition of design, where you talk about conceiving and producing a plan before, uh, or drawing of something before it's made. But I prefer Bruce Bounds' uh, take on design, where he kind of moves away from aesthetics and appearances and talks about how design is increasingly understood in a much wider sense as a human capacity to plan and produce desired outcomes. So the focus is on the outcomes rather than the thing. Uh, today, designers are increasingly involved in taking on complex problems. And some of our work or tasks involve strategic thinking, planning, and translating stakeholder needs into tangible or virtual products. Um, Garth Braithwaite says, um, designers and engineers are both problem solvers, but we have different tool sets. So getting back to what we're just, I was just saying about desired outcomes, so designers tend to focus on the needs of those who will be using the product, the end user, and whether that's a consumer or whether this is an industrial product, the focus is really try to get into the head of who will be using this, who is it for, how will it be used, how will they feel while using it, is it intuitive, does it improve their life, and does it improve their work? Um, in order to answer these questions, we have to take, designers take a very empath empathic approach to product design and development. And the purpose of empathy here uh, as a design approach is to understand user needs and design a product or experience that meets those needs. If we think about empathy, it's a process of immersing oneself in understanding of someone else's life and the rea reality, stepping into it, exploring it, exploring that perspective before stepping back out. It also involves understand understanding a context that's different than your own, location, demographic, environmental conditions, etc. So some of you are probably familiar with this type of diagram, especially to the words on the right-hand side, the iterative loop of ideate prototype test and repeat. But if you look to the left, um, the empathize is the first step where designers start with. And we use um, tools to empathize throughout the whole process, not just in the first one. Um, this is by no means an exhaustive list because there's over 100 design methodologies um, that, we, that we can draw from. But these are some of my favorite, and the right, uh, top right, we have what's called a diary study or a cultural probe. It's used in the beginning to gain user insights about a user's life. So we could send out a camera. Uh, people could be taking pictures of their environment, their day-to-day -day life. There could be video logs that we ask them to do, um, uh, sketches, or filling out an activity book. 
uh, big image on the left um, is used to sort of define a project. This is where it's called a user or um, customer journey map. It's where we map out the decision-making process of how, um, how the user wants to complete a task or what problems they're trying to, to solve. And bottom right is just um, uh, low fidelity uh, prototype. Uh, test early, uh, test often. Get out the kinks with low fidelity prototypes. I mean, this is a software example, but you can build prototypes with, with cardboard um, just to get a sense of you know, uh, how it will work. But we're not just concerned with, um, with end users here, we're also concerned with the community or communities of producers or makers, so we have to empathize with them as well. And Laura touched upon this earlier today, which I was really happy to hear about. Can this, you know, things like, can this be made with local materials? How expensive will it be to reproduce? Are the designs of the design process well documented and easy to understand? And what tools are needed for assembly and are they accessible? So, OSH projects take uh, place in participatory contexts and they are collaborative in nature. Uh, we can learn from um, body of literature and participatory design to see how we can apply some of its principles to OSH context. I'm not going to go into the whole literature here, just one slide, um, but it's talking about how designers' role is shifting from solely production environments to participatory, participatory spaces. So here the designer um, can do things like foster inclusivity, facilitate and nourish processes where collaboration takes place, and then also moving um, from designing with, for users to designing with users. And, in the next couple of slides, I'll talk about a project I'm involved with where we actually involve um, end users. It's called uh, Breathing Gates. It's a, um, it's a health commons um, where we design mobile, we produce mobile games and hardware for children and adults as well with respiratory illnesses. And the aim of the project is to encourage children to do their breathing exercises, which they need to do, as well as learn how to manage their symptoms um, in a fun, interactive environment. So we work in a distributed uh, team with a bunch of um, different, um, uh, it's an interdisciplinary team that includes game designers, patients, medical researchers, artists, uh, developers, etc. cetera. And we, um, and we get together for ja game jams. We've had some in uh, both Montreal and Geneva. And we're starting field trials in a Montreal hospital this fall. Uh, on the left, you have a picture of our fl flow meter. So the flow meter attaches, um, is used as an input device for gameplay so that they can do their breathing exercises. And there's a bunch of different games that we're, that we're developing right now and that we're going to be testing. Um, and then here's a couple of slides of the game jam. So my role in this project is, is, is twofold. I'm, all, I'm involved as a UX designer where I'm mapping out the flow of what that initial interaction will be from downloading the app, um, you know, putting in medical information, syncing the device, that sort of thing, as well as helping plan the game jams, facilitating design sessions within the game jams, and also doing a bit of uh, research to, find, to assess our participatory processes and make sure that they're inclusive. I've never had this kind of involvement in any commercial project that I've worked in. So for me, as a designer, having that kind of an impact and feeling needed or feeling like my, my effort is being valued, that's like a big thing to me. Um, so what can design, uh, designers with collaborative skills bring to your project? Well, we can create and help foster inclusive environments. We can facilitate participatory sessions for co-creation, and we can also gather user and producer insights by engaging with communities on the ground. So this is a graph, uh, you know, where all the designers, um, done by OpenDesign.io, they did this research project on why designers aren't involved in open source projects. And they asked, um, I think over a thousand people, have you ever contributed to an open source project? On the left, you have designers response, and on the right, it's developers. And you can see there's a huge discrepancy there. Some of the challenges, as I've uh, talked about earlier, is a lack of dis understanding of how designers work, and also the fact that our tools and processes are, uh, that we use to advance from a concept to prototype are different. Um, also, people feel that it, it can be expensive to conduct deep, deep design work, and not everyone is willing to invest, but there's also very um, light methods that we can incorporate. Some design work is better than no design work. And finally, there's not really much of a platform where designers and developers connect, and no GitHub doesn't count, because it's not exactly design-friendly or friendly to designers in the way that we'd like to collaborate. 
So what can you do? Uh, consider bringing a designer on board at the beginning of a project, not toward the end when you're looking for someone to take a design task, like design a logo or housing for your, your electronics. Um, also, then this applies to both designers and developers. Uh, exchange is a good thing. Try to learn a bit about each other and how we work, and you'll find that although the processes are different, um, a new perspective can enrich your project. And finally, be open. Uh, product designers, especially those working in the IoT space, are used to working with engineers and developers. And we're pretty adaptive and flexible. And many of us are just looking for the right project in order to make a meaningful contribution. Thank you very much.